Hello and welcome to this introduction to slider crank mechanisms. Within this presentation we'll be using graphical methods to construct velocity vector diagrams and acceleration vector diagrams for a particular instant in time of the mechanism's motion from which we can solve for various kinematic properties associated with the members of the slider crank mechanisms. In a slider crank mechanism also termed a three bar linkage mechanism or sometimes a three bar chain. We have a crank shown here from A to B. We have the connecting rod or con rod shown here from B to C. And we have the slider or the piston shown here at point C. This presentation does assume you've seen previous presentations related to angular motion and the relationships between linear and angular velocity and linear and angular acceleration. Also, we'll be referring to central pitot accelerations and there is a separate presentation on that topic area. To construct the various velocity vector diagrams, you'll need pencil and paper, preferably graph paper, a rule and a protractor. Most students find graphical methods quite difficult and I must say when I was studying, I did as well. So this presentation does labour the solutions for the vector diagrams, but hopefully that will aid illustration of how to construct the various diagrams. Here's a brief overview of the presentation's content. We commence with introduction to linkage mechanisms, outlining the terminology and illustrations of various mechanisms. We then consider the various types of link. In the mechanism, there's a type one link or class one link, which has translational motion only. That's the piston or the slider. There's a type two or class two link that has rotational motion only. That's the crank. Or there's a type three or class three link that has both translational and rotational motion. That's the connecting rod in our case. There's a short section included related to interpreting vector diagrams and how to determine various relative velocities. And then example one is used as an illustration to show the various stages in the process of constructing graphical solutions. So initially we outline the problem and undertake initial calculations. Then we construct the velocity vector diagram. Then we construct the acceleration vector diagram. And finally, there's a tabulated summary of all the velocities and the accelerations determined within the solution. The presentation ends with one question that's just overviewed. This question is essentially based on example one and requires you to apply the steps used in the solution for example one to question one. For reference and ease of access, here are approximate timings in minutes where each of the various sections in the presentation commence. Let's consider some terminology. Machines may contain a number of parts such as levers, transmission shafts, pulleys, lead screws, belts and chains. But machines can also contain what's termed rigid links. The crank shown here in figure one, the connecting rod shown here, and the piston here of the internal combustion engine in the diagram are all considered rigid links. Note sometimes the term linkage mechanism is used and the linkage mechanism is defined as a device that transmits motion from one point to another point. A slider crank mechanism is a common plane mechanism, common two dimensional mechanism. Here's a diagrammatic view of a slider crank mechanism. Crank AB, shown here, rotates at a constant angular velocity or angular speed denoted as omega ba, shown here. Here's the angular velocity. This produces a reciprocating translational motion 
in piston C, shown here. So essentially we have a rotational input from the crank and a translational output from the piston. Here's an illustration of other linkage mechanisms. The motorized hacksaw, at one time would see in the workshop, it's essentially a slider crank mechanism with a rotation here and a translation here. The Scotch yoke mechanism, we outlined in a previous presentation related to simple harmonic motion. Again, we have a crank here, rotating with some angular velocity. And this angular motion induces translational motion in the slider, which as we shown in the previous presentation, actually moves with simple harmonic motion. Other common illustrations would be a car jack. We have effectively what's termed a four bar chain mechanism. And also a toolbox has a similar mechanism used to open the drawers. So to analyze these mechanisms within this presentation, we're going to construct vector diagrams. So you will need a rule, a protractor, and preferably graph paper to help you draw the vector diagrams. Let's consider the various types of link in our mechanism. Here's a type one or class one linkage. Links that have translational motion only. So a piston in a slider crank mechanism has translational movement only, as shown in figure three here. The velocity vector diagram is as shown in figure four here. So the slider's motion labeled is velocity C relative to A here, C relative to A, is indicated by this arrow here. Note the notation VCA means velocity of C relative to A. The velocity vector diagram will simply be drawn as a horizontal line between A and C. Notice there's no arrows drawn on the velocity vector diagram and lowercase letters are always used on the velocity vector diagram. Let's consider types of link slightly further here. So class one, the translational link. Remember we're only considering motion of rigid bodies within this work. So a type one or a class one link has a rigid body that moves without rotation. So a straight line connecting any two points on the body always remains parallel to the original position. This movement can be termed rectilinear or curvilinear. Here's an example of rectilinear translation where the rigid link labeled A to B here travels in a linear path to A dash B dash, but the links are still parallel to each other. Notice the path from A to A dash is linear, from B to B dash is linear, but A dash B dash remains parallel to AB. Or curvy linear translation, where the original link AB remains parallel through its movement to A dash B dash, but notice the path from A to B is no longer linear, but follows a curved profile. So types of link continued. Here's a type two link or a class two link. And this is where the links have rotational motion only. So here one end of the link rotates about a fixed axis through a point on the link. This is illustrated in figure five by link AB of a slider crank mechanism. Here's A to B. This is our link, which is a crank in this case. And note that in this case, A is the fixed axis of rotation. 
the length of the link is shown as LAB here. Note that a link moving rotational motion has an angular velocity, labeled omega here, and also a tangential or linear velocity, labeled V here. And we can calculate the linear velocity knowing the angular velocity and the length of the link. V is equal to omega r, or in this case, V is equal to omega l, is a relationship we derived in a previous presentation. The velocity vector gives us the magnitude and the direction of the velocity for the free end labeled B in figure five, as it rotates about the fixed axis end A, figure five. Here's the velocity vector diagram showing the direction of the tangential velocity of point B relative to A. Again, notice the lowercase letters defining the points on the velocity vector, but no arrowheads are drawn on the velocity vector diagram. Again, considering types of links, and of course motion of a rigid body here, so our type two or class two link has a fixed axis rotation, the body rotates about the stationary point, shown here in this diagram, fi fixed axis through point A, which is perpendicular to the, the page here, or the screen. And the paths of all the points on the body are circulating about this fixed center. Here's a brief recap of a relationship we derived in a previous presentation relating linear velocity v and angular velocity omega. From the previous presentation, we derived that v is equal to omega multiplied by the radius of the link. Note that v, the linear velocity, is in meters per second. Omega, the angular velocity, is in radians per second. And the radius or the length of the link is always in meters in this work. Types of link continued. Here's type three or class three links. These are links having combined translational and rotational motion. The connecting rod in a slider crank mechanism shown in figure seven here is an example of a type three link. Figure eight here shows a velocity vector diagram for a slider crank mechanism. The two ends of link BC here and here are actually moving in different directions at the instant shown in figure seven. The two velocity vectors AB shown here and AC shown here are drawn from the same point vector BA and vector CA are relative to point A in our system, whether that's a fixed link or a machine frame. Note that vector BC, this vector here, shown in figure seven, or this line here shown in figure eight, is the velocity of point B relative to point C. And notice the direction of vector BC is always at right angles to link BC. So vector BC is at right angles to the link BC. Note that point D on the vector diagram, this point here, is located by determining the lengths BD, this length here. So to calculate length BD on our vector diagram here, that's the lengths of BD on our actual mechanism here, divided by the lengths of BC, the entire lengths of the link BC. We multiply that by vector BC on our diagram, 
to calculate BD. If point D had been located halfway along the link, then obviously point D is halfway along vector BC on the vector diagram in figure 8. If point D was 40% the way along the link from B to C, then length BD on our vector diagram would be 40% of the length BC on the vector diagram. Types of link continued. So here's our class 3. Combined motion link. That's having translation and rotation. So here the body moves such that all points change position and all lines rotate. So the type 3 link AB shown here is being rotated to a new position as well as being translated to a new position. Hence it has the combined motion. And the connecting rod is a typical example of a class 3 rigid link. Let's consider interpretation of velocity vector diagrams. As no arrowheads are shown on velocity vector diagrams, it's important to know how to determine the direction of the various relative velocity vectors. Know that the velocity of point B relative to A is the velocity of B viewed from point A. If the velocity of point B relative to A denoted as VBA is required, we place a finger at point A on our velocity vector diagram. So with reference to figure 8 here. So placing our finger on point A of our velocity vector diagram here. The velocity of point B relative to A is in a south easterly direction. In other words, if we were stood at A and looking towards B, we would see the velocity vector in this south easterly direction. We could then draw the velocity vector in this direction with the arrowhead now added to the vector and denote it as velocity of B relative to A. Interpretation of velocity vector diagrams continued here. If we now consider the velocity of point C relative to A, we would find it is due east from our diagram. Again, placing our finger or standing at A, we see the velocity vector C to the right. In other words, in this due east direction. And so we could draw our velocity vector for C relative to A and now add the arrowhead to denote the velocity of C relative to A. Just note for reference, if we wanted to find the velocity vector of C relative to B, we consider ourselves to be positioned at B, and we would see the velocity vector in this direction. And if we consider in the velocity vector of B relative to C, we consider ourselves positioned at C, and the velocity vector of B relative to C would be in this direction. Interpretation of velocity vector diagrams continued. Considering now the velocity of D relative to C, this would be in a southwesterly direction. As a relative to point C, we put our finger on point C, or consider ourselves positioned at point C, and therefore our velocity vector would be shown here. Velocity vector VDC, drawn here with the arrowhead added. So drawing vector diagrams to scale allows the magnitude, usually in meters per second, and the directions, in degrees, of the velocities to be easily measured. And that's the essence of this presentation to solve slider crank mechanisms for their various velocities and accelerations using graphical methods. Again, some recap here. If we want to convert res per minute into radians per second, back again, knowing RPM, 
we multiply it by 2 pi upon 60. That converts to radians per second. And then in radians per second, we multiply that by 60 upon 2 pi to calculate rest per minute, RPM. And to understand the above conversions, we can always refer to unity brackets from our previous presentation. Remember, it is in cancelling unity brackets, and you can follow the same cancelling unity bracket process through and converting from radians per second into rest per minute. So that's just for reference. Let's consider an example. Example one here of a slider crank mechanism. In the slider crank mechanism shown in the sketch on the right hand side here, crank AB shown here has a length, sometimes turned a throw, of 200 millimeters and is joined to the connecting rod BC shown here which has a length of 800 millimeters. Note for reference point B is the crank pin here and point D shown here is at the mid length of the connecting rod. If the crank rotates a constant speed of 120 RPM shown here for the instance shown, we've got to determine the following. Part A, the velocity of the crank pin B relative to point A. And draw the velocity vector diagram. Part B, we've got to calculate the velocity of the piston C relative to point A. And the piston is actually the slider here, position C. I'm going to calculate that velocity relative to point A here. And we've got to calculate the velocity of point D at the mid length of the con rod relative to A. Part C, we have to calculate the angular velocity of the connecting rod, B to C. And finally, part D, we've got to determine the acceleration vector diagram. The following slides will outline the full work solution to example one. So example one is the beginning of the solution. First of all, extracting the information from the question. The angular velocity in the question, symbol omega, is stated as 120 RPM. Immediately converted that into radians per second, labeled omega here. That's 120 RPM multiplied by two pi divided by 60. That's using the conversion we had on our previous slide. So that's 12.566 radians per second. Which if you prefer can be stated as 4 pi radians per second. That's the exact value. Again, extracting information from the question. The length of the crank AB, noted LAB here, is 200 millimeters converted immediately into meters, 0.2 meters. And the length of the connecting rod, BC, denoted the LBC here was 800 millimeters and again stated in meters 0.8 meters. We next need to find the linear velocity of the crank pin at point B here. So to calculate this we're going to use a relationship derived in our previous presentation V is equal to omega R. In this case that's velocity of crank pin B relative to A is equal to the angular velocity of the crank pin 12.566 radians per second multiplied by the length of the crank 0.2 meters so VBA is 2.513 meters per second this is velocity vector VBA shown here example one continued I've tried to outline the procedure for constructing the velocity vector diagram in a step-by-step -step form here, which I will let you read at your own pace, should you want to. But the following slides will now illustrate the procedure required to construct the velocity vector diagram. Example one continued. Whereas we're using a graphical method here to construct our velocity and acceleration vector diagrams, first thing we're going to do is actually 
and draw the slider crank mechanism to a suitable scale. What I encourage students to do here is to draw to a scale the mechanism at the top of their piece of paper. Then we're going to draw the velocity vector diagram underneath the sketch of the mechanism and then draw the acceleration diagram under the velocity vector diagram. That's the plan here. So the first thing to determine is a suitable scale that fits on your page in which you can draw the mechanism as shown here. Notice I've stated the lengths here for reference of the crank, the lengths of the conrod here. I know the angle of the crank is 60 degrees from the horizontal shown in the original question. So vector VBA, which is this vector here, right angles to the crank is drawn at 60 degrees here to the vertical. As is a scale diagram, I can then measure the angle of the conrod from the horizontal. And in my case, it measures 12.5 degrees. So that's just using a standard protractor to measure the angle. And I've labelled the various points. A is the fixed end of the crank. B is the crank pin. And C is the slider or the piston. Example 1 continued. Let's now define on our velocity vector diagram points A and B. And don't forget we're drawing velocity vectors here. So the first vector we can draw that will define points A and B on our velocity vector diagram is VBA, which we've calculated on the previous slide. We know it's 60 degrees to the vertical from our mechanism geometry. So I can draw that to a suitable scale. And again, you need to choose your scale carefully here with velocity vector diagrams so that it will fit on the page. I have to say, from my experience of velocity vector diagrams, Sometimes you have to draw the diagram twice. You choose a suitable scale. And as you start drawing the diagram, sometimes it will wander off the page. I've had that in industry sometimes. I have to start again. So it can be a, a trial and error approach to begin with to find a suitable scale. But assuming you have your suitable scale, we can now draw the velocity vector VBA. Starting at A, ending at B knowing the lengths of vector BA. Sample 1 continued. Some students are slightly unsure as to how we calculate the 60 degree angle shown here to the vertical. If it helps, I've tried to break down that calculation here. Notice if the angle shown here to the crank in this instance is 60 degrees, this angle here must be 30 degrees. We have a right angle shown here so that leaves us with the 60 degrees to the vertical shown here. I encourage you just to start the presentation and think through the various angles that have been used here. Sample 1 continued. Now we're defining point C. To find point C, we're going to use two construction lines. We're first of all going to draw a construction line of point B to C. In other words, considering the velocity of B relative to point C. Notice this construction line here is drawn at right angles to the conrod. In other words, drawn normal to link BC, the conrod. Now we don't know where point C is on the end of that line for the moment, so I'm just going to draw this construction line normal to the conrod and then consider the movement of the slider. Number one continued. We're still trying to define point C here. But now I add to the diagram this line here, which is the velocity of the slider, which can be considered the velocity of C relative to fixed point A. So again, this is a construction line, but a construction line from A to C. Number one continued. And now we can actually define point C. Point C is defined by the intersection of the two construction lines. So this is point C. We literally draw lines BC 
and AC until they cross. Example 1 continued. And finally, for the velocity vector diagram, we need to define point D. In this particular instance, point D is midway between points B and C on the connecting rod. So on our velocity vector diagram, it's midway between points B and C. So located here. Sample 1 continued. So in summary, we commence by drawing our slider crank mechanism to some scale. This allowed us to measure various angles. And then we constructed a velocity vector diagram, again, to a suitable scale. In the mechanism diagram, or in meters, the units in the velocity vector diagram are in meters per second. Example one continued. And the major benefit of using velocity vector diagrams, drawing the diagrams to scale, is that now we simply have to measure the various lengths of the vectors on the velocity vector diagram to find the velocities of the various components. So part A we've already found, velocity of the crank pin at B we've calculated VBA was 2.513 meters per second but now by measuring using our rule the lengths of vector AC on our velocity vector diagram we can find velocity vector CA so for part B of the question, the velocity of the piston VC measures 1.85 meters per second on my diagram. And part B also wanted us to find the velocity of point D, the center of the connecting rod. Here, so measuring this line on the velocity vector diagram, we find that velocity of D relative to A is 2.1 meters per second. Part C wants us to calculate the angular velocity of the connecting rod, omega BC. To do that, we first need to calculate from the vector diagram linear velocity VBC. So we measure this line here. From my scale velocity vector diagram, that was 1.25 meters per second. Example 1 continued. So knowing that the linear velocity VBC is 1.25 meters per second, using our relationship V is equal to omega R, we can rearrange for omega, that's V, divided by the length of the link in this case, length of link BC. So that's a linear velocity of 1.25 meters per second, divided by the length of the link 0.8 meters. So omega BC is 1.56 radians per second. And I've just converted that into rev per minute for reference here, 14.9 rev per minute. Example one continued. Here's some further recap. From a previous presentation, we developed a relationship between linear acceleration, A, and angular acceleration, alpha. That relationship was A is equal to alpha multiplied by R. A was the linear acceleration in meters per second squared. Alpha is the angular acceleration in radians per second squared. And R was the radius, or in the context of linkage mechanisms, R is the length of the link, meters. And we also noted that for circular motion, there's always an inward seeking acceleration, termed the central pitot acceleration. So central P to acceleration, again simple A, as calculated is omega squared multiplied by R, where the omega is angular velocity. And also noting the relationship we derived previously of omega is equal to V divided by R, where V is the linear velocity in meters per second. Then the central P to acceleration A can also be written as V squared divided by R. And that central P to acceleration now in terms of linear velocity V. So we'll be employing some of these relationships now as we develop the solution for example one. Example one, solution continued. 
Let's now consider the procedure for plotting an acceleration diagram, which requires the velocity diagram we constructed on the previous slides. Note that acceleration of one point on a link relative to another can have two components. Firstly, a central peta acceleration due to the angle of velocity omega, and secondly, a tangential component due to any angular acceleration alpha that's present on the link. If the link doesn't have an angular acceleration, then it doesn't have a tangential acceleration. But as from our previous presentation on central peter accelerations, we know for circular motion, we have to have the inward seeking central peter acceleration. So step one, we're going to tabulate all the values that we currently have calculated or measured and these are shown in the table below. So we started off our calculations by originally calculating the angle of velocity, omega, in radians per second of crank AB. And that was 12.566 radians per second, or 4 pi radians per second. And we calculated that directly from the RPM of the crank given in the question, which was 120 res per minute. From this, we're able to determine the linear velocity, V in meters per second, of the crank AB, and that was calculated as 2.513 meters per second, calculated from the omega AB here. Once we constructed the velocity vector diagram, we were able to measure the various velocities of the other links or other members in our slider crank system, and the Conrod, labeled BC on our vector diagram, had a linear velocity of 1.25 meters per second. That was measured directly from the velocity vector diagram using the appropriate scale. Then we also measured the velocity of the piston, CA, and that was 1.85 meters per second, read from our velocity vector diagram. Knowing the linear velocity of the conrod, and noting that the conrod has translational and rotational motion we can calculate the angular velocity of the conrod. That's essentially the linear velocity of the conrod, the 1.25 meters per second, divided by the length of the conrod, which was 0.8 meters. So our omega value or angular velocity for the conrod was 1.56 radians per second. Note that the piston only has translational motion, so it does not have an angular velocity. Now we can calculate the various accelerations of the links. So let's consider first of all the central peter acceleration, denoted as A suffix CEN, and that's in meters per second squared. To calculate the central peter accelerations, we're going to use the formula from the previous slide. In our recap here, we're going to use this equation, A is equal to V squared divided by R, because we've determined the linear velocity of the various links from our vector diagram. So to calculate the central peter acceleration for the crank, that's simply the linear velocity of the crank, which was 2.513 meter per second squared here, divided by the length of the crank, which is 0.2 meters. So that evaluates to 31.58 meters per second squared. And similarly for the conrod, we know its velocity, we know its length of 0.8 meters, we can calculate its central peter acceleration. Notice for reference, the piston only has translational motion, so it only has a linear acceleration, not a central peter acceleration. But we will measure this later on from the velocity vector diagram. Now calculating the tangential accelerations, denoted as A suffix tan here, they're also in meters per second squared because they're linear accelerations but in a tangential sense on the link, they can only be determined for components that are actually accelerating. Now we know from the question, the crank is rotating at a constant angle of velocity. So that meant that its angular acceleration alpha was zero because it's not accelerating. And then from this equation, if the angular acceleration alpha is zero, so the tangential acceleration A must be zero.
So for the crank, there's no tangential acceleration. It's not accelerating. Now for the con rod, which actually has combined motion, as we know, then there will be a tangential acceleration, which we'll measure directly from the acceleration diagram when we construct it. And then from that, we can calculate the angular acceleration when we know the linear acceleration of the link. And by definition, the piston that has translational motion only. So for the piston, these two entries here are ignored. So now we need to construct the acceleration diagram to an appropriate scale. And then once constructed, we can measure the various accelerations from the diagram and then complete this table. Sample one continued. We continue with our procedure for plotting the acceleration diagram. What I've tried to do on this slide is, is outline the fundamental steps we'll be undertaking to generate the acceleration vector diagram. So in step two, we'll choose a suitable scale for all our known acceleration components uh, listed in the table on the previous slide. And we'll do that by initially trying to sketch what we think the acceleration diagram will look like. Again, as with all graphical vector diagrams, one of the initial problems is actually knowing where to start the diagram on your page and how the diagram will spread across the page. So sometimes initial sketching of trying to estimate where the diagram will will meander to as you add the various acceleration components on is quite useful and sometimes you do have to actually start the diagram again because your scale or, or your initial origin of the diagram is actually in an unsuitable place so it's useful to actually sketch the diagram as that should indicate if the scale or the position of the origin should be changed once we decided on our scale we're going to plot the acceleration vectors for a link about which most information is known. This is usually the grounded link. In our case, it will be the crank link AB. Step four, we'll plot around the mechanism. That is plot as far as possible from one end of the mechanism, point A in our case. And once we've run out of information, we'll then plot from the other end to complete the diagram. Finally, five will measure the values of tangential accelerations as required. And then from these, we can calculate the angular accelerations alpha from the equation alpha is equal to V squared divided by R. So that's a generic process for, for plotting the acceleration vector diagram. And on the following slides, I'll try and show you incrementally how to develop a diagram. So example one continued. So first of all, I'm going to draw the central P to acceleration for crank or link AB. Now remember that central P to accelerations are center seeking accelerations. They're always directed towards the center of rotation. So commencing my diagram from origin A here, if I was positioned at A, then I would see the central P to acceleration of the crank in this sense. So on my diagram at point A, Looking towards point B, I would actually see the acceleration downwards in this direction. And that defines point B quite clearly because we have calculated the length of the vector here, which is the central P to acceleration, 31.58 meters per second squared. Again, notice I would be drawing this to my scale I've chosen for this particular diagram. So what we've done here is defined points A and B. They're fixed points on our diagram. Note that there's no tangential acceleration of the crank to add because the crank is rotating at a constant angle of velocity. We're informed in the question. So there's no tangential acceleration. If there was, I would have to draw that at right angles to the central P to acceleration. But as I say, in this case, with constant angular rotation, Crank AB has no tangential acceleration. Sample one continued. Now consider myself moving to point B of our linkage mechanism. At point B, I'm now going to consider the central P to acceleration from the con rod. Remember, central P to acceleration always directed inwards to our point. So 
At point B, I would see the central P2 acceleration in this direction. So on my diagram, starting from point B, I would draw the central P2 acceleration, which is 1.953 meters per second squared, calculated from our previous table, shown here. And the angle of the vector B to C dash, as I termed it here, would be at this angle to the horizontal, which we measured previously from our scaled mechanism diagram to be 12.5 degrees. So I basically defined point C dash here. I've called it C dash because the conrod will have a tangential acceleration as it will have combined motion, so it has an angular velocity here. So we need to consider that to actually find point C. Example one, continued. So what we're going to do now is draw a construction line that's at right angles to the central P2 acceleration. So this construction line on my diagram is at right angles to the link, the central P2 acceleration on my diagram. But I don't know in which direction to draw. I just draw a construction line. So this is my construction line from C dash to C, and it's drawn at right angles to the line BC dash. So I haven't yet defined point C, because my diagram's not closed here. But if I draw a construction line from A to C, and of course this construction line AC, shown here, is a horizontal linear line, because the slider's motion is linear. So relative to point A here, we just got a horizontal line. That now allows me to define point C on my diagram. So the diagram is closed now. Sample one continued. So there's the final acceleration diagram showing points A, B and C defined. But we also need to find point D on our diagram, which is midway in this case between B and C on the connecting rod. So I've drawn my vector B to C because both B and C are defined points now. And then finally, I can define point D on my diagram, halfway along vector CD. Example one continued. So here's the final acceleration diagram. All we need to do now is measure the unknown accelerations. So acceleration of the slider or piston C relative to A measures 23.5 meters per second squared. And that's measured to the scale used to construct the diagram, the tangential acceleration of B relative to C measures 27.5 meters per second squared, and the acceleration of point D relative to A measures 22.25 meters per second squared, again scale from our diagram. So as with the velocity vector diagram, it's very easy to determine accelerations from the acceleration diagram simply by measuring the appropriate vectors to the scale used. Example one continued. And here's all the entries now in our table. Here's the linear acceleration of the piston, 23.5 meters per second squared. That was measured from the acceleration diagram. Here's the tangential acceleration of the conrod. 27.5 meters per second squared, again, measured from our diagram. And I've also calculated now the angular acceleration alpha for the con rod with its combined motion. So that's its tangential acceleration divided by the length of the con rod. So 34.3 radians per second squared. So that's the end of the graphical solution for the slider crank mechanism shown in example one. I'll let you review question one at your own pace. It's actually very similar to the example one. So you can use the solution we outlined in the previous part of the presentation as the basis of your solution for question one. Notice the labeling is different here. The crank is labeled as O to A. The conrod is A to B in this case. So different notation, but the crank is moving with a constant angle of velocity says here the crank rotates at a uniform speed of 1800 rpm.
To answer the various parts of question one, you will need to construct a velocity vector diagram and an acceleration vector diagram. Answers are shown in the bracket here. I'd now encourage you to start the presentation and attempt question one. I'll outline the solution to question one in the next presentation associated with slider crank mechanisms and also include some further questions that you can attempt at your own pace. And here's the bibliography used to help generate the presentation. I hope it has been of interest to you and thank you for viewing.